Welcome Gecko Pia fam, it's Chris Choi. Welcome to another reptile video. So today I'm going to be reviewing one of the exciting morphs that a lot of people want to know, which is going to be the super giant morph. As we all know, I'm going to break down into three different things. And number one is going to be the history, which when was it found, who is the breeder of this line. And number two, genetic traits, recessive, dominant, or incomplete dominant. Those are the things that I'm going to be going over. And third and lastly, I'm going to give you guys how it works. Basically giving you guys the possibility side and also what we'll consider to be super giant and giant. Lepegeko morph. So starting with the history, around in 1999, Ron Tramper, as you know, he is one of the well-known breeder for Tramper Albino. He is the founder of that line. And also he was working with that project for in 1999. And one sudden day, he discovered the supergiant morph from his Tramper Albino lines. It was just randomly popped off, random mutation genetics, as we all know. Um, that's how we normally get new genetics, new morph for Lerpic Echo. And he named that first hatchling, which it was a female, named as Moose. So a lot of bee breeders who had that supergiant project back in the time, they love putting their parents as Moose because Moose is the original and it sounds so much better when you have the original parents from your super giant lines. I hope no one is really faking it when they were labeling those parents informations, but Moose is one of the first super giant leopard gecko morph that was produced and it just spread out quickly everywhere and a lot of breeders start working with them. And some breeder are now calling this super giant as a Godzilla. So if you like Godzilla, go get some and create those big geckos in your collections and hope you guys create really really cool geckos and show, show it to me later when you guys got some really good super giant. So those are the informations for the history and second part about the genetic traits. Um, it turns out to be recessive. There's a lot of discussion over this because some people say this is not recessive, this is dominant or incomplete dominance. But as a result, Daron, who is the founder of the super giant, has worked over for many years to define what the genetic is and it came all as recessive genetic. So that is the genetic for a super giant. And there are other informations which in order to create a super giant, some people say 24 months will be a good time of period to define if they're super giant. But actually, if you have 12 months, you will be able to tell whether if they're super giant or giant or normal at that time. One other quick information that I also found while I was doing research is that when you're thinking about creating a super giant morph, some people will say don't breed that male or female for that whole year. Because once you start mating or putting them pairing together, that the size growth will stop from there once you pair them together. So I'm not sure if this is a myth or if this is scientifically proven. So if you know any of those informations, write me in down the video. And thirdly, the characteristic part, I brought a couple of informations that I found in online. Giant male should be somewhere between 80 to 110 grams. Giant female should be somewhere between 60 to 90 grams. And super giant should be somewhere around 110 or up. And super giant female is going to be somewhere around 90 grams or up. Super giant male, female, or giant male or females, they're going to be different size. So make sure you know if your gecko is male or female because they will be labeled differently when it comes to labeling the size. And the possibility size for the super giant and giant is going to be super giant to super giant, 100%. Overall, it looks very similar to the Max Snow. And I wasn't quite sure if this is accurate or not because if it seems the same as a Max Snow, why would I call it as recessive? I think in my opinion, they put it this way because there's a super giant and giant forms together. So that's why they are recessive. But if you know any details on that, write me another comment down below. <laughs> so that is the car characteristic part for super giant. This is one of the last slide that I prepared for you guys. And this is quick notes, which this was very interesting when I was looking into this because, you know, when it comes to selling geckos, at the expo, some breeders will trick people by overfeeding their geckos. And normally that really doesn't work that way when, when you're defining super giant or giants. Overfeeding is just fat gecko. That's what it is. It's not super giant or giant leopard gecko. That's just going to be normal with a lot of 
weight. In order to be considered as a supergiant or giant, you actually need to look into their overall balance size from head to tails. And if they're big enough, like the picture I showed you here in the slide, then it will consider it to be super giant. But if they're small, especially the way I learned it was their head is a lot different when you see normal super giant. So looking at the head size will definitely give you some answers, give you some tips, whether if your gecko is a super giant or giant leopard gecko or normal leopard gecko. So those are the key informations. And once again, weight is just going to be the number. Look at the overall size, length from head to tail, and see if they're big enough when you compare to the normal leopard gecko. That's how you can tell if they're super giant or normal leopard gecko. So that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe to our channel. And make sure you share this video information with anyone who would love to learn about their Gecko Morph. And also, lastly, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I post every week on Saturday at 8 a.m. in Pacific time. It used to be a Monday, but I decided to change it to Saturday. Hope this time works. If anything changed, I'll definitely keep you guys updated. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching my video. And to end this video, what is your next Leopard Gecko project for your line? Or if you don't have a Leopard Gecko, what will be your favorite Leopard Gecko morph that you would like to learn from us? Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. God love and peace out.